following is a GNC podcast production. Welcome to Geek Addicts, a pop culture podcast. Hello and welcome to Geek Addicts, the pop culture podcast where we talk about all sorts of things. Uh, my name is Matt. With me, his signature move, the talk no jutsu, Bill Barber. How are you doing, Bill? I'm doing good. I'm not sure if in reality I'd say I agree with that because I don't really talk as much as I do on the podcast in reality, but... Uh, you yeah, know. but you do three podcasts a week plus guest appearances, so I, I, I think, I think that qualifies. <laughs> I guess so. I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm doing all right. Uh, we're currently in the middle of a uh, three day long weekend, which is really nice because I needed it. Yeah, same. I'm, I'm really happy about it. We're taking the taking the kitties to the zoo tomorrow because my work gives free passes oh, every nice. summer. So. Yep, yeah, that's gonna be pretty cool. It's been a while since I've been to the zoo, so actually, you know what? I think the last time was when Cindy was pregnant with uh Francis because we went for Xander's birthday, but that was the one in Providence. Yeah, so I'm learning constantly that buying a uh, uh, being a first time home buyer, you start learning a lot of things as you go along. Mm-hmm. And I'm learning now that obviously the previous owners didn't replace batteries on anything in this house, like ever yeah so i've been like slowly changing light bulbs out like getting like everything replaced and uh i've started realizing now like anything that had a battery in it was never changed so like the um i'm sleep i'm like dead asleep in the middle of the night and then the, the smoke detector in my bedroom the battery finally died on it so it just starts giving out this piercing shriek every Ugh, five se- every that. like minute and i'm just like <laughs> are you kidding me it's like the That's middle nice. of the night trying to sleep so i have to get up like get a ladder to like get the thing down and then i have to like open it up and of course it's a nine volt so i've got to go find a nine volt battery hmm. uh, that's uh, yeah. well apologies at the top of the episode um the past couple of days i've been dealing with a cough it's not nearly as bad as the one that i had before but uh it, it's gonna it's gonna rear its head every now and then throughout the recording most likely so um, no worries. Which is actually kind of funny because I just started listening to earlier today. I started listening to the most recent episode that you put out of GNC, and Alex was talking about how she had a cough too. I was like, oh, shit. oh yeah, it's going around. But she was like dying, and she's like, I have to go to a doctor, and I'm just like, yeah, do that. And then she, they, <laughs> she goes to the doctor, and they're like, no, it's just fucking bad allergies. That's all it is. And I'm just like, good to know, I guess. That's what I'm pretty sure it is for me too, because we we've been getting a bit of a heat wave um mm-hmm. at least for may <coughs> so obviously like we, we we get like a bunch of rain and then we get like a week of 70 to 80 degree weather actually this week it was like 85 all week uh today's the first day it's really dropped um and it's still in the 70s i think it's like 80 but, here uh, today but yeah between all the rain and then all the all the sunshine is you know all the all the plants are doing their thing so yikes Yep. Which sucks because like pollen never really like pollen never really affected me that way when I was younger. And now now it's just awful every year. There was a study going around that like you can like be immune to it like for like all of your life and then just one day it'll suddenly just hit you and then you just suddenly have allergies. Allergies are weird like that. Like um my mother in law, when I when I first met my wife and we started dating and stuff, she was like deadly allergic to peanuts. Now that allergy is just gone, she can yeah. eat peanut butter all day now. It's, it's bizarre. Like it'll just like some people it, like it'll just hit them years later, and other people it'll just go away. You're... I really hope that has never happened to me with a uh, poison ivy because poison. I've never been allergic to poison ivy, and I really hope that that doesn't turn. Knock on wood. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, better than being allergic to sulfur and not being able to light matches. So, oh, you're, you're allergic to sulfur. Yeah. <laughs> It's Yikes! A, if I light a match, it like locks my nose up, and I like can't breathe for shit for like a, a day. It's bad. Ugh. Grill lighters. 
Yep. <laughs> we talk about yeah. a weird allergy, but that's besides the Yeah, point. it's better than being allergic to grass. Yeah, that, that's a thing. Allergic to grass. <laughs> that sucks. Or you get bit by that tick that like makes you allergic to meat. Dude, I pulled like three of them off of me yesterday. It was really... And I didn't even go in the grass. I don't know where the hell they mm. came from. It was ridiculous. Yeah, I've had Lyme disease. It's not fun. I, I had a Madden. Um, but yeah, aside from that, I unfortunately I didn't get to play as much Persona last week as I was hoping, but I have made some progress. I unlocked the, the sauna dungeon. Oh, so the best one. One of the best there. ones. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, you, you've, un, a, you've encountered Kanji, uh, Kan right? Kanji. Kanji's great. Yeah. Because you meet him and you think he's just like the, you know, the usual punk kind of kid. And like as soon as like it actually started like kind of like the characters started interacting him with with him a little bit, I'm like, oh, I know what his thing is. <laughs> I know exactly where this is going. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil it, but I will say Kanji is a very interesting character that there's a lot of interpretation around him. That's fair. Well, I mean, there's not a whole lot of uh, imagination once you get into the dungeon, <laughs> or at least even see him in the Midnight Channel. Um. I'm not going to spoil it, but I'll, I'll let you. I'll, I'll I'll just like let you know it's there. It's a bit deeper than it sounds. Fair enough. So, uh, just don't consult the internet on that dungeon because oh boy, <laughs> oh boy, oh geez. Um, no. Well, with this game, I've been trying to avoid <coughs> avoid um, walkthroughs and stuff as much as I can, unless it's like a specific mechanic that I need to like try and figure out how to work, which um. I'm starting to get more more the hang of like the social links and stuff. I kind of have just been focusing on Chie right now because she's my brawler, so I want her stats to be up. That's fair. But aside from that, um, I'm just going through the sauna right now. I'm only on like the fourth floor or something. <coughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. <coughs> no, that's that's a fun. Too. Yeah, I know it's the worst. It doesn't help that it's hot in this room yet. I finally gave in and put the AC on. You know, it sucks that I, I recorded my grandmother's house, as I've mentioned before. See, she has central AC, just apparently not in this room. <laughs> That's a bummer. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. <clears throat> what are you going to do? Move on and um, persevere. <laughs> But yeah, aside from that, a uh, new Stephen King book came out this week, and I've been going crazy with that. I'm already like almost halfway through it. Hmm. Yeah, so really the, uh... book is book of short stories. Oh, cool! I saw the last <laughs> the um, last episode of uh, Sandland came out dubbed, so I'm going to finally sit down and watch that at some point this weekend. Nice. I was waiting for that. I'll probably do that this week. Yeah, and then I got to find it. I got to watch. Um... Zom 100 because Alex wants to do an anime swap on it. So, hmm. what are you gonna make her watch? Sandline or oh, okay, fair enough. I, well, when I was watching it for our episode, I was like, this would be a good episode for anime swap, and I told Alex <laughs> to watch it. It's like the perfect length 12 episodes. Hmm. Yeah, so I gotta watch Zom 100 show. now, but yeah, no, it was. I really enjoyed the uh, what I've watched so far. I gotta finish the second arc, but. That'll be for another time. Hmm. Oh, but yeah. Oh. Um, aside from that, I finished Whole Cake Island, finally. And, nice. Uh, <coughs> started the Kai or uh, the Kai version of Boo. Oh, nice. Oh, give me one second. I'm just gonna grab a cough drop. Hopefully, that'll help. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Anyways, um. So yeah, not much has been going on. It's just been a been a long week. Finally, some time to relax. <laughs> That's all I'll say. It's been an interesting week. I don't even know what day it was, but there was one day that was like, like it started out nice, and then it started like downpouring and thundering, and then it was nice again, and then I went back out on break for the next break, and it was raining again. It's like, what is even going on today? It sounded like Thursday. Thursday was pretty. Um... Hmm. Thursday was up there. I was in the heat treating room for that the entire day, so I got to watch it happen as I was playing with fire. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, Lost my train of thought for a minute. 
Oh yeah, the know. um the Paper Mario uh Thousand Year Door remake came out this week. Oh yeah. Uh, my copy is delayed till next week, but like I was gonna have time to play it. Um, I'm That's looking fair. forward to that one though. It's a uh, one of the best Mario RPGs ever made, honestly. Solid. I haven't played very many of those. I think actually I don't know if I've played any Mario RPGs. <coughs> they're they're hit or miss. Like the uh, the remake of the original Mario RPG that just came out was really good. Um. The Mario and Luigi series is really good. The first three, anyways. Uh, mm. And then the first three Paper Marios are all really good. The Mario and Luigi ones are on the um, the Switch Online, right? So only uh, the first one is on the Game Boy Advance um, Switch Online. Mm. The other two were DS games. Gotcha. I might have those on that like emulator chip thing I have. You might have power power. Partners in Time and Bowser's Inside Story. They, they honestly should be on there. Fair enough. Oh, but, uh, well, yeah. So, yeah. getting back to our topic then, I guess. Uh, Naruto. Yes. We're restarting where we left off. Um, so, we left, I, I believe, at the end of the tuning exam last time. Yes, I want to say. So we uh, jumping into like the, you know, the fine Tsunade arc, find the fifth Okage. Um, this pretty much kicks off immediately with Itachi showing up, which is like a huge reveal at the time. Yeah, he because he was still a villain at this point. Spoiler warning. Yeah, um. yeah, he was like, um, like he had been alluded to a couple of times throughout. Like there've been a couple of points where Sasuke would mention him in passing, kind of, but like. Sasuke would have one of his, mentioned him once. Sasuke would have one of his little emo moments in the corner. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and you know, it's so um, funny rewatching the show. I he was so over the top at times. Like I was like, oh my god. Oh yeah. For sure. Like watching it with my wife right now, like I'm seeing it all. I'm like, I thought this guy was cool when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's better in uh Shippud in later on, but uh my god and you until he series. sucks again <laughs> well he's got that character but for different reasons on. <laughs> yeah he's he is such that. he is such a little cringe lord though in the original series for real um but yeah like what was your first thoughts uh on meeting itachi and uh and kisame when you when you watched it the first time i just remember that being like oh shit another uh U- uchiha and oh my god, he's actually like threatening. <laughs> like what? What the fuck? Mm. Um, yeah, that first encounter is pretty awesome though, because it like really shows like how intimidating the uh, the the Sharon God actually kind of could be. Oh yeah, for sure. Like when they first revealed the the Sukiyomi, mm. like the whole concept of having like like trapping somebody in the space time that in the real world is only like a second, but you're trapped in there for like days just being tortured over and over, like one glance into his eye and you're in a coma, like you're done. Especially if you learn the, uh, some of the, when we get even farther into his backstory way later on, you learn some of the shit he did with that. It's like, holy fuck. For real. It's wild. Like the Sharingan is like such an overpowered, uh, ability. Like looking at like (laughs) anime as a whole, like the Sharingan is up there. It's funny, like the two major eyes in the Naruto universe, the Sharingan and the uh, Byakugan, are like literally just two super OP moves, and they just casually have them in like family lines. Yeah, but then like of course there's gonna be more eyes later because I don't know Kishimoto has a super boner for eye powers, I guess. They're just like light bulbs, just screw them in. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Kind of how they work in that universe. It's kind of bizarre. And um. I don't remember if this is how it was in the anime, but I remember when I was reading the manga, it didn't actually show the manga Kyo Sharingan until Naruto and Sasuke's like showdown at the at the statues. Hmm. And I don't remember if it actually shows it in the anime or not. Like it's when been a while. when Itachi's fighting uh, Kakashi. If it does, it's been a while. I don't remember. Yeah. 
I don't know. It's just one of those things that that came to mind. I I couldn't remember if that was the case or not. That was speaking of fights. Yeah. That was a cool fight too. Yeah, especially when Guy shows up, and that was like the beginning of the trend with uh, Guy and Kisame. Yeah, <laughs> which is one of my favorite running jokes in the whole series. Well, I mean, I love that joke too because it parallels so much too with the whole running joke of like the bromance between Kakashi and Guy. Mm-hmm. For real. those two have such a great dynamic, and they fight so well, like uh, like with like as a team. Hmm. Well, I mean, it makes sense because you got Kakashi, who's like the the super talented. Like, I know all these different moves, all these you know ninja magic moves. And then you got Guy, who's just I punch real hard and real fast. <coughs> well, he's kind of like you know, the parallel well, together. Well, he's like one of the definitions of like the series where it's like it's not so much about the technical skill; it's about the determination, willpower. Yeah, which like Guy is probably the. Uh, one of the biggest examples of hmm. and then um so yeah they uh itachi has his whole fight with um kakashi and them and then i think by this point naruto and jiraiya had already left to go find Tsunade. i believe and this so. is this is the arc where naruto learns his other signature move like i guess I don't know if this is why it was introduced, but I, I think I feel like this move was introduced specifically to be a foil for Chidori, hmm. or to be like Naruto's version of it. Yeah, and now that, that's because, the uh... because since they don't shoot beams, they have to have some sort of clashing attack. <laughs> and that's the Rasagon, Rasagon, right? Rasengan, yeah, Rasengan. Um. It does become it, it. I do like how it becomes like such a iconic move for Naruto as it goes through the series to the point where it, in the future, gets like passed on to his uh, son in the sequel series. Although the uh, reasoning behind it is different. Yeah, and I love that like Boruto kind of takes his own spin on it too. No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> um. And also, like, I know, like, you know, we're kind of dipping our waters into way later stuff, but I think it's really funny that, like, later on, it's it's said that um, the Rasengan was always supposed to be able to be thrown, and Naruto just could never do it unless he was in, like, sage mode or something. Yeah, because he always kind of used it as just a punch. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. I, was, I always thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> like, Boruto was able to do it, like, right away. Naruto well, couldn't do it unless he had like nature energy. That was always one of the interesting things about what makes because I know we're getting way into the future here, but like the Boruto anime and manga are very they take a while to get into because they start very rough. Um hmm. but like one of the interesting parallels between the two is the fact that like Naruto had literally nothing when he started and had to work to where he was and like Boruto literally has everything and he kind of has to understand why it's important to learn. Yeah, like automatically can use like three different elements like right at the beginning. But when he tries to do something really specific, he just can't. Hmm. Oh, like like how like when um he gets like shown like this one very specific move and it's like all right, do this thing and it's like he just can't do it for whatever reason. It pisses him off because everyone always compares him to his dad. Yep. Um, but yeah, getting back to Naruto. Um, so yeah, this is the point where Naruto and Jiraiya are off and, you know, Jiraiya is starting the whole process of teaching the Rasengan. And I love the whole, like, running joke about Naruto's got all these savings in his little frog purse and Jiraiya just takes it and spends it on women. <laughs> yes. As you will. Dry is kind of a piece of shit at times, I'm not gonna lie. Especially when he's first introduced. Like as time goes on, you learn more about him and you see like their relationship and stuff. Like he grows on you, but when he's first introduced, he's really an asshole. Yeah, although when you learn more about him too, it's like it kind of annoys you even more because you're like it's like what the hell, dude? Yeah. You should have been a lot more sympathetic to this kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Especially considering uh, how similar you were once you learned like more about Jiraiya when he was a kid. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so you know, Itachi eventually shows up at like the hotel that they're staying at. And like, you know, Naruto knows the second he opens the door, like, I am fucked. <laughs> like, if Jiraiya doesn't come back, I'm 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 done. This is over. <laughs> Which Naruto doesn't have that kind of thought very often. Like, you know, he'll he'll be intimidated from time to time, but he's never like completely like there is no hope. <laughs> like he's like, the power of friendship isn't gonna work this time. Hmm. At least not that's yet. when <laughs> at least not yeah. Yet. And then Jiraiya and Sasuke both shows up show up. Sasuke has his whole you know, flailing at his at his brother thing and instantly gets taken out. And then gets to watch his family die all over again because Mangekyo. Yeah. Itachi was kind of a bastard here. I get why he did it, but Jesus. For real. For real. Well, I mean, I, I feel like, yeah, like he had his reasons, but I feel like the meta reason is because, like, I think Kishimoto really wanted you to hate Itachi. Like, yeah, they well, made yeah. him cool because he's a good fighter and he's really talented and he's got all these cool stuff, but, like, it went out of their way that to try and make the audience really hate him. Well, yeah, the because they wanted to make that reveal later on so much more of a gut punch. Mm -hmm. um, so by the end of it, Sasuke is taken out and he's like in a coma now too, uh, which makes finding Tsunade even more important because she is like the most talented medical ninja in the world. And she is like the only person who can wake them up and also possibly heal Lee. Yeah. So at this point it's not uh, a confirmed yes or no thing. Um, so from this point onward, like even up to the point where they meet Tsunade, it's pretty much just training arc. Yeah. Which is always fun. I always enjoy a good training arc in, in uh, these kinds of classic shonen shows. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have any 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 points to to mention on that part. Not really. I mean, I enjoyed the dynamic. Like, it's so interesting, like how weirdly fast Dragon Ball was in comparison. Naruto is kind of a slow show, like to start off. Hmm. Well, I think I think it's kind of like um. I think that might have been part of it, though, is they wanted it to be a little bit more of a slow burn. I mean, Naruto is like, I mean, usually slow burn is used in like a romantic sense, but like it applies here. Well, ironically, it applies both ways for Naruto, but um, uh, it really does apply in this sense as well because this show starts off and it really doesn't even hit its climax until at least like a quarter into Shippuden, where like yeah. you really it really starts to all come together. Mm -hmm. How did you start seeing the stuff behind the scenes? Yeah, because it's like original Naruto, I feel like is a much better. It's more tightly written overall, but it's very slow paced. Yeah, and and it seems like at surface level, like um, like it's very straightforward. But then, like, you know, once you get into ship and then you start figuring out all the stuff that's going on behind the scenes and um. Like when you really start learning about like more like Kakashi and like what he's thinking throughout all of this stuff that's happening, which you don't get until way later. Yeah, I think that's another thing too with the early parts of the show is like to me, I always found Kakashi to be the most interesting character starting off, but you don't really learn anything about him until like way after when other interesting characters have been introduced which i think was kind of effective because it made you want to keep watching but at the same time it kind of felt like a tease a bit hmm. well it's kind of like and they kind of like show that he kind of shows his hand with kakashi right at the beginning too like when he's first introduced and they're doing the whole like let's like all members of the team are all going to introduce each other to each other and you know tell us tell us some things about each other and he's like hmm. oh um i like lots of things uh, I'm not going to tell you anything that I don't like. Um, also, I'm not going to tell you my dreams for the future. He's just literally like, he's going through the whole like list of things that he wanted to, 
wanted them to cover. He's just like, I'm just not going to tell you anything but my name. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> well, he's kind of a <laughs> Kakashi's just a troll for most of the series. Mm-hmm. I mean, the first thing we see him use is thousand years of death. So, yeah. <laughs> I just love his no shits given attitude. That's honestly like I think one of the reasons why he appeals to like an older person now. Mm-hmm. For sure. I mean, he was always one of my favorite characters even way back then, but no, I definitely the older I get, the more I, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> he 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 becomes like the squidward in a lot of ways where it's like you just don't like him at well, you don't relate to him at first, and then you get older and you relate to him so much more and he just becomes so much more relatable. Yeah. Um, so yeah, then we finally meet Tsunade, who has a gambling problem and I'm kind of a low key drinking problem too. I love how all of the three the three sen and just have so many. They all have their own issues. Mm-hmm. For real. Um, I mean, isn't isn't like she also like, Mars. True. He he takes it to an extreme. I mean, they all kind of have their extremes, but his is just on a different level. Um, mm-hmm. I, I do find so. Isn't it like confirmed that like Tsunade is doing like some jutsu to make herself look young still? Yeah, it's just a transformation jutsu. Yeah, like a, a it, basic ass. You know, like you see in the first episode. Because isn't she like in like her like sixties, seventies, or something? Uh, all three of the signing are 50 at this point in the show. 50, okay. Yeah, so they're Which, she's, they look a lot signing. older. Oh, well, I mean, not Tsunade and actually Tsunade and Ochoa are both, but I mean, you look at Jiraiya and you think he's a little bit older than 50. He's lived rough. He also doesn't hide his age. That's true. Um, yeah, he's the only one that doesn't hide his age. Now that I think about it. Yeah, right. No kidding. I wonder what Ochoa tomorrow would look like if he had aged. Well, he's weird because he changes his body every like couple of uh, months or whatever yeah however long who knows did they ever show Tsunade like what she actually looks like or is that always just like a mystery only her hand oh I've seen whatever like whenever she gets like super tired or whatever after using like the the healing thing that she does um like it'll release the transformation and you'll just see her hand kind of like wither it also looks far older than it actually should, but she also drinks a lot, so that makes sense. Oh yeah, they're all kind of addicts. So yeah. Um, uh, speaking of her character, though, though she's immediately interesting. I will say. Oh yeah, for sure. And then like you, you meet her and you're like, really? This is this is the next Ninja King? <laughs> this alcoholic gambling addict? <laughs> like that's kind of a thing that this this show really does. Is it like kind of plays with your expectations? Because every character they hype as like, hype up as this big important character, they show up and you're like, "That's it." <laughs> it's like okay, mm-hmm. like because wasn't Jirai kind of hyped up too? And then like you see him and you're like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> well, that's the thing is he's introduced before they like before they really explain who he is and like show like why he should be hyped in the first place, and gotcha. like later on like that because they approach Jirai at first to be the next Hokage and he's like. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> He's like, fuck that shit. He's got I got way too much peeping to do. I, I do not have time for that. It would be it would be kind of frowned upon if the Ninja King was going around bathhouses peeping at girls. <laughs> yeah, just a little. Um so yeah, Naruto they they meet they meet up and Naruto dislikes her immediately. <laughs> yep. Um which is pretty funny because he doesn't realize that they're there to find the next Okage. He just thinks that they're going to find like a really good healer. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so like, you know, obviously as soon as he realizes what's going on and especially when she turns down the job, he loses his shit. They have like a, a, a quote unquote brawl. Really. It's just her flicking him a few times. Yeah. Um, and you forget how they, pathetic he, Naruto was early on. Oh yeah, he, he definitely he definitely changes a lot, especially he, after the times. He, I will say, out of every, all the the big like shonen anime protagonists, he probably has the biggest growth arc out of any mm-hmm. of them because <laughs> he really does start at literally nothing, and it takes a while for him to become what he is at the end. 
for sure. Yeah. Um, so that's when uh, Naruto and Sanade make their bet is that he's going to master their Rasengan within a week or however long it was, 10 days. I don't know. I don't remember. <coughs> and I, I forget what it was. It's like if he, if he can't do it, then he has to admit that he can't be a Hokage or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it was. It was one of those uh, things but if where he it's wins, like, hmm? it was one of those things where it's like you know he's gonna do it, but they have to make it interesting. Yeah, and they gotta like build it up. It's gonna be a big reveal. Um, but um, we'll learn more about Sonate and why she's as jaded as she is. And uh, you know, it turns out that she lost her little brother when he was Naruto's age, and then later on her boyfriend fiance person whoever he is and there's like a weird like correlation between all of them because they all wanted to be hokage and that's why she's trying to shut down naruto it's like this whole big like deep thing yeah um, oh and uh we didn't even mention because they because she meets up with orochimaru before this oh right that's right before they they find her and um this was like the first moment where like you meet her and you're like, oh shit. Because that was when she like punches the wall behind her and the wall like explodes. And that was like the first time you really get a hint of like what her whole deal is. Yeah. <laughs> because she basically That was definitely a oh god. Isn't like what her one of her like big things is like she can like just store up all that power and then just like let it out kind of. Yeah, that's what the uh the diamond on her forehead is. Yeah. Uh... It's just like she stores all of her chakra in that one spot, apparently. One of the many things they would give to Sakura later to try and make Sakura interesting. Yeah. Which, I don't know, I, I read something on the internet recently that said that supposedly Sakura is the most powerful Kunoichi at, at this point in Borojo, and I'm like, is she, though? I, I, I mean, yeah, I guess I've she's seen... got she's got some cool stuff, but, like, is she, though? I'm pretty sure I've read that Hinata is technically stronger just because she's got that, like, a literal, the power of a god. <laughs> Half thanks to mm -hmm. the last movie. But um, Hinata doesn't do anything and, anymore, so. <laughs> like, and honestly, I I don't think it's going to take much time for Sarada or Himawari to surpass her. Yeah. Cause, <laughs> at this point. Because Sarada and Himawari both got big upgrades in uh, after the time skip. Good to know. <laughs> Good to know, I guess. I, I keep forgetting the uh, the Barado anime ended, and they're waiting to do the next one. Yeah, supposedly, uh, from what I heard, um, Boruto's going to be seasonal from now on. Probably for the better. Probably should have done that from the first with original Naruto. Well, the final dubbed uh, DVD Blu-ray set comes out pretty soon, so I'm looking forward to that. I can finally just finish that damn thing. Oh, for Borisho? Yeah. I need to start getting the, the ship it in sets now that they're coming oh, out yeah, they're like 30 episode sets. Yeah, I wish I waited because I bought all the fucking DVD sets, all fucking 38 of them. Jesus. Wow. I did it in the That's dumbest way, man. too. I started at 38 and went backwards. That's fair. It, it worked. <laughs> it was just a really bizarre way to do it. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to get the the big ship and box sets because uh, because you can't stream it anyway. Like, not if you want to watch j exclusively the dub, you can't stream it because you'll hit a cutoff point where it'll only be subbed. Yeah, no matter where you watch it. Yep. I don't know why ship and end is so much different. Like OG Naruto, you can find the dub anywhere. Ship and end, they don't expect to see the Ninja War in English. <laughs> It's got to be some licensing issue because I know Naruto channel hopped, uh, ship it and channel hopped a few times. Hmm. Because I remember Disney bought the rights to it and then realized how fucking violent the show was and we're like, we don't want this. Yeah, but now they're they're doing the 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 new Bleach stuff, so it's like, I, I won't call I mean, Disney. <laughs> I won't not say Disney is a bunch of hypocrites. <laughs> um, that's fair. I mean, they're also making the Deadpool movies, so <laughs> I mean. Well, they, they bought the studio that's making the Deadpool movies, I should say. Same difference. The Disney logo pops up at the beginning of it, so either way. Yeah. You still got you still got your brand on it. 
Disney has their morals, but they also have want money. So, you know, <laughs> one outweighs the other. Yep, that's for and, sure. anim- and let's be fair, anime wasn't making a lot of money at that point. Yeah. Well, I think at this point, because they've owned Hulu for a bit, I think they see the um the the scorecard or whatever. Like they they're seeing how many people are watching anime on it. Well, they see how much money Crunchyroll and High Dive to a lesser extent makes, and they were like we want a piece of that. Why are we putting our shows on this? Pull all of our shows, please, and put them on our thing. Hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, basically, Orochimaru meets up with Tsunade, and it almost comes to blows, but then Orochimaru is like, hey, I'll I'll bring your brother and your boyfriend back to life. Uh, if you heal my arms, which I don't think we mentioned that in the last episode. Um, the third Okage sealed off his arms souls i don't think I guess. We, did we even mention the third hokage now that i think about it i don't think so which is ironic because that fight is happening in the background throughout that whole attack on the leaf village you know what's weird the third hokage is just such an unlikable character for me that i just always forget about him i always thought he was a he was a decent enough character and he was like the only one of like the elders that actually had a conscience but he did but he's still him from doing the bad thing yeah it's like he does so like the whole time like with like the early show like all every all these characters i'm always like i i always have that thought of like this could have been so easily avoided if you had just done this one thing well there's another one of those that's coming up (laughs) yeah that i was gonna mention um like when when the third hokage dies i really didn't feel bad i just kind of was like "Eh, oh well no when his son dies, though, I felt bad that well, yeah, happened. His, his, we'll get into that's a spoiler for later, but uh, yeah, when his, his son is a much more likable character, even his uh, grand it's his grandson, right? Konohamaru, yeah, Konohamaru is his grandson, right? Yeah, or yeah, even he's a more likable character, but he's also designed to be annoying, so that's why I was, I was uh, kind of okay with it. Who is Konohamaru's parents? I don't think it's ever been explained. Because you're know, sure. like, oh, this is this is my uncle. And it's just like, well, we waited a long ass time to say that because he's been around forever. But all right. I'm sure there's like a family tree like web that you can look at online that explains everything. But it probably isn't yeah. important. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, Rochimaru promises to bring it back to life if uh, if he if she heals his arms. And she's like really thinking about it. But. Yeah, there was big deal with the devil energy going on there. Well, yeah, because you, you needed two human sacrifices to make it work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which cool. it was heavily implied that she was going to use Jiraiya and Naruto. Which <laughs> Yeah, that, w- that would have changed things a lot. Would have been pretty fucked up considering that, like, she was kids with Jiraiya. <laughs> like, that's fucked up. Isn't she also, like, don't we find out later she's, like, tangentially related to Naruto, too? Uh, yes, because I think Naruto is because uh, isn't her clan like he, she's the granddaughter like, of the first Hokage? Yeah, and like they're tangentially related. Yeah, because he was married to an Uzumaki. Yeah, it's a whole confusing thing. <laughs> but also, Naruto is descended from an uh, an off branch of the um the first Hokage's clan, so he is technically related to her, but like distantly. Yeah, it's one of those weird fucking things. But then it's also, I guess it's revealed later on that like most of the Hokages have married Uzumakis. Oh, interesting. So, at least until uh, Tsunade and the ones that come later. Yeah, because <laughs> I don't think. I think, at... yeah, I think it's just good. For... I think from Tsunade, like, none of them get married until Naruto. Yeah, that's true. I think about it. Um, So, that's, like, a whole thing that she's struggling with, and, um... Oh, there's also this weird thing about her, like, cursed necklace or something. I I never understood that. That's the thing about... This necklace is so important. It's cursed, but it's also, like, like, super important for some reason. 
that's the thing about OG Naruto that always annoyed me was like it is a very well written show, but it has so many random plot threads that just never get answered. Well, the thing with the necklace kind of comes to a point later in Shippuden, but but it's like in the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't mean much. No, it doesn't. Um, so you know, the day comes eventually, and it's like the night before, like the day that she's supposed to like make up her mind or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, she roofie is Jiraiya, yep, yes, she does, which is the point I was going to bring up. Every bad thing that happens from that point onward is Tsunade's fault. Yeah. Because if she hadn't drugged Jiraiya, then I'm pretty sure full power Tsunade and sage mode Jiraiya could have taken out Orochimaru with no arms. Yeah. And that would have (laughs) solved a lot of the problems that happened going forward. You Remember earlier I made that comment about like there's so many things in this show that if they had just done this one thing it would have avoided so many things in the long run. And it's like, why did she roofie him in the first place if she was going to turn down Orochimaru? It's like, what was the point of that? Kishim, I, I like Kishimoto's writing, but he, you can break it apart real easily if you look like for these little tiny things. That's true. But, I don't know, I mean, overall, like I like the way a lot of the story connects uh, over time, but like Little things like that early on just bug the hell out of me. There's a lot of moments in Naruto that are like, you just scratch your head and you go, why? Like It's like, why? Yeah. It's just a really stupid decision on her part. I, I feel like it was a lot of it was padding, too, because he needed to stretch something to make a deadline. That, that's always my, been my theory. That's fair. I mean... That is kind of a thing with manga artists is they they are on that like weekly deadline. They have to get like a full 15 to 25 page chapter done every week, yeah. which involves, you know, coming up with the story and the dialogue and actually drawing all the pictures and uh, formatting it, which Kishimoto, I, uh, I don't know if you've actually read the Naruto manga. Not a lot. Of Kishimoto, um the way he does his panels is kind of very basic he does a lot of like six panel pages that are like very simple with the layout Mm -hmm. um and he loves his his triple takes loves them he does in the manga too it's not just an anime thing yeah Uh, which we get i think one of the first big ones we get is when um when naruto hits uh um the hell is his name kabuto with the rasengan because hmm. we get like full pra- full page spread triple take of uh of that hit from different angles which is interesting in that point at least how it, he kind of like yeah he does the triple take but he shows it from different angles and that's pretty cool hmm. although i think that first rasengan how he hits him and it kind of creates that like big ball that like shoots him backwards into the rock that's like the only time the Rasengan actually looks like that when he uses it. Yeah. They just kind of like made it like super, super epic that one time. And then it's just like, yeah, this has just been moved now. Yeah, pretty much. Kind of well, like they how it. they. Oh, God. No, you good. I... Your point's probably more important. <laughs> I was going to say, it's like kind of like how they made hand signs a big deal at the beginning. And then eventually yeah. they're just like, yeah, we don't need those anymore. You can just do it. <laughs> Yeah, that was a thing, like, where they do their weird, like, mumbo-jumbo, and then it just goes in, and then it kind of gets phased out as it goes on. Yeah, like, when um when Kakashi's fighting uh, um, uh, Zabuza, and they're they're doing that, like, huge, long, complicated string of hand signs to do the, the water dragon thing, and it's like, mm-hmm. you, you guys were doing that for, like, two minutes straight. It's like, you could have just gone up and stabbed him. <laughs> I always, it, it always reminds me of that, the god-awful... Uh last airbender film where they're like the earthbenders are like you have six of them doing their fucking interpretive dance in the corner and then this tiny little pebble flies by for real and then they end up canceling each other out anyway so it was like all right so you did all that for no reason <laughs> yeah um, it's one of those things where it's like it looks cool but then you're always questioning <laughs> quite you question it after and you're like wait a minute oh yeah this is the part where also uh so it, it had been like mentioned throughout 
when we're learning about Sunati's backstory and stuff that she has like this intense fear of blood, which I mean, you're a doctor. It's kind of weird, but all right. Um, You'd be amazed though how many like medical like um, students like go through all of it and then they see blood for the first time and they can't handle it. Well, I, I, I believe that, but like she's like so far beyond medical school. <laughs> like she's True. like considered to be the top doctor in like the world. Like you'd think True. you'd be able to handle blood a little bit more, trauma or no trauma, but. Um, but yeah, she overcomes that and defends Naruto, and that's when like the real big fight starts, which is honestly one of the best animated fights. Like how I mentioned in the last episode, where um, uh, one of the episodes specifically where Naruto and Gara are fighting is like really mm. well animated and choreographed. Um, there's another one in this one when the three Sanin are fighting, which is just insanely well done. Yeah, no, it's. <sighs> That's the one thing I will give Naruto every time is the fight choreography is very well done. Yeah, like I was watching, um, I was watching with Cindy earlier in the week, and it was the when Sasuke um, was fighting Orochimaru for the first time, and I was just watching the way the fight choreography was done, and it just it looked so pretty, especially for the time. Like it was just so well done. I mean, this is way far down the line, but I still think the final fight between Naruto and Sasuke is like one of the coolest fights in the series. I've only actually watched that fight once, and I've read it once. Oh, wait, do you mean this series or the following no, no, series? The, the the final encounter they have. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, it's called, they have a lot of those kinds of skirmishes. They have two, one, two really big fights and then a bunch of little skirmishes throughout. Yeah, because Sasuke's a petty little asshole. Yeah, right. And I, I hate after like the whole... Like in Shippuden, every time they kind of encounter each other, and then like you get teased, like oh, they're gonna fight, they're gonna fight. And he left. He left. He's gone. Like God, he damn can't. It. <laughs> he, he can't be bothered. He's going through his emo midlife crisis. It's gonna take his him eyes hurt. Needs... Yeah, his eyes hurt. He needs to go take a nap. <laughs> it's gonna take him five five hundred episodes to get over it. You know. Yeah. No kidding. Um. But yeah, they have that whole big fight, and then ultimately Orochimaru gets back to a corner, and he has to dip. And Sinatra's like, all right, I'll be Hokage. That's cool. Is that the same fight where Naruto gets like punched in the head, like that famous image, or is that a different fight? Yeah, because that was when Sinatra was kind of having her, like she's getting the shakes over the blood, and uh, uh, Kabuto was going to like go in and like punch her, and Naruto gets in the way. That's like the icon- yeah. iconic image. Yeah, that image floats around so often, like out of, out of context, and you're always like, huh. And then you see the and fight, also and one like, of oh. the. Yeah. And also it's one of the scenes where like the manga does it way like more intense than the than the anime because it's the whole thing where Kabuto's coming at him with the, the kunai. And like in the anime, it just kind of slips through like the webbing of his fingers and he grabs them. Which I mean that alone, like the whole like concept of getting cut between like the webs of your fingers, like that kind of skews me out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but in the manga, it straight up goes through his hand. And he grabs grabs his fist like that, like way more intense, way more way more uh, gory. Yeah, well, you can get away with that on print, but you can't quite get away with an animation form. Yeah, I don't know when, um, like what what time of day Naruto aired in Japan, but I know that has a big thing to do with it because that was why um, Dragon Ball Super was so much less bloody than Dragon Ball Z is because. Super aired, I believe, on Sunday morning or Saturday morning in Japan, where Z was like, like Wednesday or Thursday night, when on his original run. Yeah, it's a similar thing with Yashihime. Like that was aired around the same time, like Pokemon would be aired. So it was like they had to tone down a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the whole like big Tsunade arc. Then she comes back, and there's a whole like little mini arc of. She pretty much heals Sasuke and Kakashi instantly. And like, yeah, they're still on bed rest, but they're like fine. And then there's like a whole little mini arc about um, whether or not she can actually heal Lee, which is really the last big thing Lee gets, which is really upsetting because I love Lee as a character, especially at those early episodes. Yeah, he kind of just becomes comic relief after that, which is kind of annoying. Yeah, and it's like when he has his fight with Gara. It's so intense, and you're like, "Oh man, this guy, this guy could really bring it. He's super strong. He's got the gates and all that." It, but then, like, he never gets any better with it. And then, once you actually see Guy use the gates, it's like, 
All right, who gives a fuck about Lee? Guys, guys, the man. <laughs> what depresses me about Team Guy is the fact that like they really evolve into being like completely irrelevant, like as the series mm-hmm. goes on. Well, actually, yeah. which is sad because like they're still somehow more relevant than Team Eight is. Mm-hmm. Like Team yeah. Eight just flat, Team Eight flat out just like once uh, ship it and starts, they basically just get merged into team seven and their teacher just disappears because of pregnant. And um, she kind of hangs out with team 10 more than her own team. Well, by ship it. And they're all tuning anyway, except Naruto, but that's a running joke, except Naruto and Neji for opposite reasons. True. Cause Neji's a Joni by them. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Neji's such a weird character. He's so, like, over and underused at the same time. I don't know if I mentioned it in the last episode, but I saw a meme recently, and it was, like, that scene from the Boruto movie where Sasuke is, like, knocking at the door, like, looking for Naruto, and, like, uh, Hinata answers the door, and, like, it was one of those, like, things that everybody says, like, oh, this is the first time they actually spoke to each other. And in the meme, it was, like, oh, she's looking for Naruto, and she's, like, oh, he's not here. He's, He's still at the Hokage's office, whatever. And he's, like, he goes... Okay, bye, Neji. And she goes, see you later, Itachi. <laughs> I just yeah, thought it was true. really funny because they never actually interact, so they, there's no that reason is, to know each other at any personal level. That is really ironic, too. Like, I well, I remember reading that, and it was like, that's the first time Sasuke's ever interacted with Hanada. And I'm like, no, it can't be. And it's like, yeah, it is, in terms of canon, anyways. Yeah. I just thought that was really funny. Like, I, was, I was dying laughing when I saw that. My favorite is the people who are always like the the people who like don't actually look too deep into it and they're always like, well, explain this. And then they they show the gif of Hinata punching um Sasuke from uh, Road to Ninja. And I'm like, that's not even the same universe. Yeah, that's a different timeline, bro. <laughs> that that's that's bitch Hinata and Perv uh, Sasuke. Like I still need to watch that movie. I've I've been wanting to watch that movie. I have it on DVD too. I just haven't gotten around to it. It's one of the better um movies for the non-canon ones. I've always I think I've only seen a handful of the movies. Um, I've seen like the the OG Naruto ones, which I only only one of them I really liked. Honestly, the problem with the Naruto movies is they're all just so like because they're non canon, they're all just so like meh. Like the the reason why I always say like Road to Ninja is probably the best non canon one is just because it has an actually interesting idea. Hmm. Actually, you know what's funny is I. Even though I haven't seen the Road to Ninja ep- uh, the Road to Ninja movie, I saw that one weird filler episode where the alternate timeline Sakura somehow ended up in in regular timeline. Yeah, because she's not present in the film. That's that it, it's weird <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah, really bizarre. Um, but yeah, that's one that I definitely definitely need to get around to. I always say like the 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 only two Naruto movies that really are worth watching are like Road to Ninja and um, the Last. Yeah, well, I mean, Boruto is good too. The Boruto movie's good. Uh, it's kind of irrelevant though with the uh, TV retelling of it now. Yeah, but really, like the only major difference between the two is that in the manga slash anime version, he gets the the karma. True. The well, also they changed up the uh, the preliminary fights because they didn't have like Gara's son in the movie at all, or at least he wasn't relevant in the movie. Yeah, he was there. He just wasn't like important like they just kind of just like patted it out for the anime yeah because uh they made like pick the big um opponent in the movie and then he gets like just like downgraded immensely in the the anime version yeah which is one of the reasons why i like the the movie more and i think if i remember right i think the manga went went by the movie as opposed to the anime (laughs) it's been a while since i read it though so i i can't quote me on that but I'm pretty yeah. sure it followed the movie more. True. Um, so yeah, um, do we even want to talk about that little three three to five episode filler arc, or should we just skip it? Uh, what's the brief summary like? Because I forget, <laughs> I don't even remember it. Uh, they need they go on a mission to um, help. The, protect this kid who's running a race because for some reason it's important that he wins the race. I don't really remember. 
Yeah, um, that's probably not. And he, he has like he has like the Lee Waits, and they fight those guys from the Rain Village for the tuning exam. And then at the end, um, there's a dude with um, uh, lightning swords, and that's pretty much the whole deal. Actually, it's yeah. it's like a combination of like of like tuning exam stuff mixed with uh, the first episode of Naruto, because apparently the kid running the race did the same thing Naruto did in the first episode, stealing the scroll. Ah. But he actually got out of the village for it. Yeah, I don't think it's that important to cover. Uh, we should probably we'll yeah. probably just skip over the filler because it's all pretty pointless. Yeah, I, I figured we would do that in general, but because that one was so short, I figured we might as well at least call attention to it if we're not going to actually cover it. Yeah. Um, although I will say, it might. Not, I think it would be fun at some point in the future to just do an episode just about the Curry arc because I thought that was fun. Maybe. So. Maybe maybe an it was episode a stupid of, arc. It was a stupid maybe, arc, but it was funny. Maybe after we get through like sh- shipping it in Bardo, we should do a, a retail like a, a bonus where we cover all the filler arcs like that are wor- worth talking about. Yeah, I, I I'd agree with you, but I don't know if I haven't admitted it's been to watch all the filler arcs at once. I think I'd have to take them one at a time, <laughs> or just look up the ones that are actually worth watching. That's fair. Yeah. Um. All right, so getting into the final, Sasuke wakes up after uh, being healed, and he's even broodier than usual. Yeah, he went from being the the My Chemical Romance kid to like the uh, I don't know what's an even more emo band, <laughs> um, Linkin Park. Well, they're more metal, but um, yeah, you know. but that's. People have been putting Linkin Park and Sasuke together since the early 2000s. So he went from uh, Evanescence, Bring Me to Life, to Crawling in My Skin. Okay, that works. Pretty much. And that is actually a song they used a lot for him. (laughs) I'm sure there was many an AMV made around those. Oh, yeah. I saw a lot of them back then. A lot of them. (laughs) A lot of Linkin Park. Um, (laughs) Yep. So Sasuke is being super bitchy and wants to fight Naruto on the roof because, you know, anime. And is real upset at the end when Naruto actually does pretty pretty damn well. And like there was like that moment where after the fight, which is actually a really well done fight too. Um after the fight, when they both get thrown into the water tower with their their special moves. Um Sasuke has that moment where he like looks at the two and he's like, haha, my Chidori fucked it up way more. And then he goes behind it and sees that Naruto has literally imploded the other one. And he yeah, gets all butt hurt about it. Yeah, he just Sa- Sasuke's like character here bothered the fuck out of me because I'm just like I'm like, he's not even like understandable anymore. Now he's just like being so petty for no reason. He's just like, oh. He's improving faster than me, so uh, obviously that means I need to kill him. Like it's like it's it's like almost like when you when you're born born with everything and gifted from the start, you don't train harder, so you get lazy. Meanwhile, someone who has nothing has to constantly work their way up, and that's why Naruto suddenly is better. And it's like, yeah, geez. Plus, I mean, there's also the the fact of. Um, I know they don't actually like explain how it works until ship it in, but he's also got the the shadow clone factor mm. because he's gaining so much extra experience from using shadow clones. Yeah, honestly, the Naruto's and the shadow clones is like a really interesting concept because he really like that really becomes kind of his gimmick as it goes on. Oh, for sure. Like that's easily like the thing he's most well known for. Um. It's actually funny. I saw a thing. It was like one of those red pill, blue pill things on uh, Facebook a couple weeks ago. And it was like, would you rather have all of Naruto's abilities or all of Luffy's abilities? I'm like, yeah, I would take just shadow clones over all of the, all the other abilities brought up here because that would be so useful in day-to-day life. Yeah. Honestly, (laughs) just send one to work. Like, good. And then Yeah, send one to work, send one off to go learn like uh, an instrument, send one off to go learn a language. Like, you do all sorts of stuff. It'd be so useful. 
Yeah, honestly. Uh, so getting back to Sasuke and his bitchiness. Yeah. Um, so that's when he's approached by the sound ninja. Um, which I think we saw briefly in the Chunin, like the, the attack on the Leaf Village, because I think they were the ones making the barrier that locked in the third Okage and Orochimaru. Yeah. Um, and they approach Sasuke. Ultimately, Sasuke decides to leave and go to Orochimaru because he wants power. Um, and from that point, uh, once everybody realizes that Sasuke is gone, they need to form a team with the um, newly uh, chuninified Shikamaru as the head. Mm. And they take along Naruto, Choji, Neji, and Kiba. What a random team. <laughs> now that I think of it. I know, right? For real. But it's like, it's a really cool team, too. Like, having like a little mix of all the different groups that we've yeah. seen at this point. Honestly. Yeah, because we got Naruto from Team 7, Shikamaru and Shoji from Team 10, and then Kiba and Neji are both from different teams. So yeah, they got at least one representative from each team. Also, I just realized it's totally Team Sausage Mess there. They didn't bring a single girl. Yeah, well, I mean, Sakura was no use. True. And at this point, Hinata wasn't really much either. Yeah. Um, they probably and 1010 forgot. always got the shaft. They forgot 1010 exists. 1010 is going to forever be known for that image of her impaled on the pole. Yep. And uh, uh, Eno probably just didn't give a fuck at that point. Yeah, Eno's not much using it. Her kid's way better than her anyway. They didn't even use her power. <laughs> yeah, that's actually kind of sad in hindsight. Which is funny because that's supposed to be like the whole thing with the inner Shikacho. It's supposed to be those three specific powers. But he's like, nah, I'm a draw. <laughs> I'm a draw. I mean, he does kind of use it later because he's got to save his parents' marriage. <laughs> but um, that's mm. besides the point. No, oh, I didn't see that one. Oh, you didn't get to that filler episode? I, I, It's entirely possible that I skipped over it. I, I don't know. Okay, there, there's a whole um, episode about him learning how to use the freaking mind jutsu technique. But uh, Well, I know there was an episode where he was like, he, I don't know, he got the yips about drawing and for some reason it wasn't working so he tried to use his mom's for a while and it wasn't a good fit for him no they, they so they do an episode later where he actually tries to learn it because they kind of mm. need him to and it, gotcha. it, it ends up of course being an Enosai um argument and he has to stop it oh he got uh, totally off topic in the newest Boruto chapter he got fucked up Usai yeah oh no um uh, whatever the fuck his kid's name is. Uh, oh, Enojin. 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 Yeah. Yeah. He got fucked up. Lovely. He got treed. <laughs> oh, that's always lovely. Yep. Um, so, yeah, they all go off and they're chasing down the sound guys. And apparently, like, the, the way they explain it is Sasuke needs to, like, die, quote unquote, before he can, like, awaken the, the, the new, like, stage for the curse mark. Um, which apparently is more important than we were led to believe. Because all of these sound guys have the curse mark and can use it up to the second level. The curse mark is just fucking weird. <laughs> like, that entire mm -hmm. power. I, I feel like it was introduced just for it to be, like, another kind of, like, dark power that Sasuke can use, like, to counter Naruto's Nine Tails. Yeah, pretty much. Even though it doesn't hold a candle. <laughs> no. Even close. It, it's only really useful early on when, Nas when uh, Naruto doesn't have any um, real control over the Nine Tails yet. Because mm -hmm. by the end of the series, uh, the first series at least, the the most he's been able to bring out is like one tail. One or doesn't he have like two by the end? Like at most. Not in the first series. Um, we see him almost bring out three at the very beginning of Ship It End. Right. But it's not until the the other bridge arc. Yeah. When he actually like goes full full tilt. Um so yeah, they all go off and um so out of the 
I guess five fights because there are five separate fights going on with you know a rotating rotating people involved. Uh, but there are five main fights before like the big one at the end. Uh, which one of those did you like the most? Honestly, I kind of forgot about most of them other than the, the final fight between Naruto and Sasuke. Well, uh, the first one we had was like the big, the big tough, stupid one uh, who fought Choji, and Choji had his whole little, um, his little arc with the we taking the the superpower pills, right? Guess, like the butterfly right. wings and stuff. Yep. Which like, I don't know, it hit me on a level emotionally that like now more than it did back then. Hmm. Um, I don't know why, but just for some reason, it just it hit me more in the feels now that I'm older than it did when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, and then we had not uh, Neji versus the Spider Guy. I remember that one. I remember that one being okay. Mm. I liked that one a lot when I was a kid. Uh, we had Shikamaru versus the Flute Girl because he always fights girls. He does. That is such a weird point it's because he's the sexist one so he has to fight the girls was he sexist i don't really remember i'm pretty sure he was sexist at the beginning and then he he overcome obviously he ends up with tamari at the end so he kind of has to move past that she's kind of a no-nonsense chick see when i think of shikamaru i think of his like angsty like period from like shipping and and like his Mm. His current uh, incarnation, where he's just chill and doesn't give a fuck. With his goatee. <laughs> his stupid looking goatee, yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, we had uh, Kiba versus the, the one guy that's actually two guys. <laughs> yeah. K- Kiba's such a just, forgettable character, too, I'm not going to lie. That one's probably the one I like the least, honestly. Uh, I think that it just dislike that villain the most like the the one guy that was actually two guys well it's also just like i hate to say it but like i'm trying to think of like eva having a decent arc in shipping in like as well and i really don't remember any well i can't speak for the anime but he's like completely not there at all in in the borjo manga like i don't think uh, i've he... seen him once in the manga he has a filler arc where he gets a, in an argument with his cat girlfriend. Like that happens. I did hear about that. That um, happens for like a, an though. episode. Uh, there's also when Sarda and uh, Arda are trying to find uh, Rise up uh, porn books, and uh, they ask uh, uh, they ask uh, Kiba and uh, uh, Shino about it, and they go, uh, you, "You guys shouldn't be uh, looking for that." <laughs> um, yeah, you don't need to read that. Read Tales of a Gutsy Ninja instead. Yeah. <laughs> that was the lead up to the time travel arc, actually, now that I think about it. Oh, you know what? Yeah, because I, I started the time travel arc. I never finished it, but I think I do remember that. Um, And then the last one was um Bone Guy. And it started, he started out fighting Naruto, which was I think was just a pad, padded out. Mm. And then Lee showed up. And took over. So Naruto could chase Sasuke. Um, and the only ones that were actually able to win their fights alone were Choji and Neji. Uh, even though they almost died in the process and would have died if Tsunade hadn't healed them. Yeah. Um, and all the rest needed help from the Sand Ninja who somehow made it and were able to help. Yeah, the, this whole fight thing was interesting, but I felt like a lot of it was kind of they just pulled it out of nowhere. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, Choji's and Neji's, I feel like, were were solid because they were only, like, two, three episodes. <coughs> and they pretty much exclusively focused on those fights. Hmm. With <clears throat> with uh, Kiba, Shikamaru, and Lee's fights, they're having all three of those fights happen at the same time just so they could do the big reveal with the Saiyan guys all showing up yeah. at the same time to, to rescue them. But I think with them having all three of those fights at the same time kind of took away from them all. Mm. Because you couldn't really like focus on it and give the characters the time they needed. Um, and it also just felt like it went on forever because of that. 
Whereas like with Choji and Neji, it was like, all right, we had two, three episodes, get this fight done, have your whole emotional thing, move on to the next one. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. For me, I feel like the Neji fight and um, I liked Lee and Gara working together, especially after Lee had just, like he's still healing from his surgery. Like, so this was like recent. It just happened. And Gara shows up and helps him out. And like that was that was a really cool thing that they kind of like put all that behind them to work together towards something. Hmm. And I like that that like the sand people are like their go-to allies now after that whole debacle. Yeah. Um but yeah, I don't know. I I think the I mean, it's always fun whenever you see Lee or Gara fight. So that one's definitely up there. But I also really like the concept of the Byakugan and how that power works. And how it was, like, apparently the perfect foil for the spider guy. Yeah. No, it's a cool power. Like, I, I... At face value, you think it's just, like, x-ray vision, but then they realize how much more deep it is. Like, with its, like... Hmm. It, it's basically, like, an all-seeing eye, essentially, in a lot of ways. Pretty much until that actually becomes a thing later on. Yeah, that's true. Because there's a char- there's a character who gets introduced in Boruto who's literally just omnipotent and can see anything past or present as long as it happened uh, during this person's lifetime, mm. which true. is just outrageous. It's just <laughs> such an outrageously OP power. Um, wouldn't be shown in without it. Yeah, right. Like we didn't need more magic guys that were just OP. Um, so then we finally get to Naruto versus Sasuke, which is where we really get Sasuke's like full backstory, with a with some stuff taken out. And you know what's funny is like the last time I watched this, I like I was watching it, and like as I was going through the whole backstory, I was like, you know what, I'm picking up on a lot more now that I like if I was the age I am like if I was like maybe in my mid twenties or so watching Naruto for the first time, I probably would have picked up a lot more that there was more going on than just Itachi killed the family. Like there was some shit going on underneath and they made it very clear. I think just my 12 year old brain could wrap a head around it. Well, it's like the thing, the thing with that reveal is like when they, cause they, you get the backstory of the destruction of the Uchiha clan so many times. But each time you get it, a little bit more gets revealed until you finally Mm. get the full picture and you're like, oh. That's why actually um, my my friend Matt, uh, I I got him to watch through Naruto, but like I made him watch like specific chunks, like them pretty much like the important bits because I knew he wouldn't have the patience for like all the like the whole thing, especially all the flashbacks and all that other stuff. So I actually wait. I skipped over Sasuke's backstory during this fight because I knew we were going to get the whole thing plus more once Sasuke actually fought Itachi. Yeah. So I just saved it for that point, which ended up actually working out really well. Yeah, because um, they they really do show you that damn thing so many times. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, this is like the big emotional, like, you just don't understand me. And Naruto's like, but I want to. And that's like, kind of, <laughs> it's that's really, kind of like becomes their thing for a long time. It is. They also kiss again. Which, oh, we didn't even talk about the first kiss. Like that happens so many times. Don't they kiss twice? Or does it happen earlier? I forget. I don't think so. I don't think <laughs> but it do. happened on accident twice. I don't remember. No, but I remember that one scene where Karama references it like way later. <laughs> Like after they're cool, he's just like, haha, your first kiss was Sasuke. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that that they were joking. It. Yeah. <laughs> Such a good I lost my mind when that happened. It was so funny. Isn't that a running joke that like everyone had their first kiss with Naruto or something? I don't know. Maybe. I couldn't die. Um I remember that being a joke at one point in the series. <laughs> So yeah, um, we learned like Sasuke's whole backstory about how like there's definitely like shit going on when you're like you're watching it and you're seeing like 
the way that the Yoshiha clan is interacting with Itachi, like you can tell like there's there's some shit going on underneath, but because we're looking at it through the lens of Sasuke, who was like, I don't know, six at the time. Yeah. You don't really get that like that view like underneath uh, uh underneath it all. Um so you're seeing it through the lens of a six year old, which is just Itachi bad, he kill. Yeah. <laughs> um that is still a dark scene. Oh, for sure. Um, and this is when, like, Sasuke reveals, like, oh, the Sharingan has, like, this upgraded version. And to unlock it, you have to kill your best friend. Which, actually, I don't think is actually true. Yeah, I think that's just I think you Sasuke just, being I an think lord. I think you just have to experience heavy trauma. And that unlocks it. But, well, no, it's because Itachi told him that you have to kill your best friend. Oh uh, yeah, okay, that makes more sense. So I don't know why he did that. To like, because obviously, like Itachi had his own reason for doing things, but like, why would he try to manipulate him into killing his best friend? I don't understand that. Itachi was kind of a bastard <laughs> at times, unless he was trying to like, unless he was trying to encourage him not to follow in his footsteps in his own weird way. It's like. Don't I'm always trying to get this power because I know it's downsides and I don't want you to have that. So I'm going to tell you this really awful thing that you don't actually have to do to unlock it. I'm always convinced like Itachi was just constantly playing like 4D chess in the background. Oh, for sure. He he knew what was going on like the whole time. He was he was the one guy who like had the full view of everything except for like the actual big bad. But even he didn't have the full view. Well, there's there's a reason why they refer to itachi as like a walking spoiler like whenever he's around because mm -hmm. like anything involving him is just a giant spoiler oh for sure um but yeah this this fight is probably the best animated fight throughout the series yeah i will and, say um, i really i really hate uh sasuke's uh first mark form it's such a weird looking design i thought it was really cool when i was a kid but the purple lipstick is a little much. I, I just like, I'm just like, why does he go straight? I just like, I just thought the body horror was kind of unnecessary, but I was like, yeah. Oh yeah, with the, with the hand wings coming out. Yeah, I was just like, that totally makes sense. It isn't going to be a problem later. Yeah, don't worry about it. It doesn't last long, apparently. No. no I think you only just... see him go curse mark stage two, like two more times after that. And that's it. Yeah. And I think I think the very next time you see him do it, he loses one of his hand wings. Yeah, which is ironic because what Naruto ends up going through later on is even more body horror-ish. But um, oh yeah, big time. Uh, the fight is fun though. I do love the whole symbolic symbolic nature of like that final hit where Naruto puts the line through his uh, headband. Yeah, uh, Naruto loves doing that kind of like. That kind of symbol symbolism. There's so much symbolism in Naruto. Well, because isn't that like a thing in like the mythos is that once you put a scratch through your headband, it signifies you as a defector or something? Yeah, you're like a rogue ninja if you have that. That's why like all the uh, Akatsuki have it and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. It was pretty I was... brutal. Like the one scene where uh, where Sasuke like pretty much breaks Naruto's neck. Like that was yeah. brutal as fuck. It, it was a pretty brutal fight. It, it, you know what the yeah. worst part is, too? It is a great fight, but it ends on such an unsatisfying conclusion because there's, like, no res like resolution. They just kind of... They end exactly where they started, like, with no, like, res yeah. resolution. And it's like... I mean, Sasuke damn. does technically win. He does in in a sense that, like, they they failed at um their goal, like, basically. True. I mean, by the end of it, Naruto's knocked out and Sasuke is still walking, barely. But hmm. ultimately, he did win. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's Although, an interesting, like... Oh, if Naruto had pulled out more than just a single tail, he definitely would have ruined Sasuke. True. But, of course, we can't, we need, we, we have a whole nother series to get through for that. But, um... Save that for later. It was just, it was an interesting choice, like, because at the time, as, as kids we had no idea that this shit was going to go on as long as it was um, yeah right it felt like such a uh 
kind of like an unsatisfying ending, like kind of a downer end in a lot of ways. Yeah, definitely. Even though in terms of anime, it wasn't even the end because it went on for another like 80, 90 episodes. Yeah, and which is mostly filler, right? I, it's, I, I think the only thing in that chunk that isn't filler is when Tsunade takes Sakura as a pupil. That and the uh, the uh, whole uh, Naruto going off with uh, Jiraiya to train, right? Yeah, but that happens at the very, very, very end. Well, yeah. Um, but yeah, aside from that, it's all just filler arc after filler arc. Which really annoyed me as a kid, because not only did I not know it was filler, but every time one of these filler arcs would start, they'd be like, oh, this might give us a lead to finding Sasuke. I'm like, finally! Nope. Isn't uh, nothing, does nothing doing? So I haven't watched any of that in like decades. So I have only watched the stuff that matters. Uh, mm. Did does Sasuke ever appear? Or does he just like stop appearing in the show for a while? I think there might have been one scene where you like kind of see his silhouette, but then like it's revealed like when they're going there that he was actually there like a month beforehand and wasn't actually there anymore. Okay. But I think that's the most you get. I think you do see Orochimaru and Kabuto at one point. But it's like one of the very first filler arcs that shows up. So it was like right after Sasuke left. And then nothing after that. So this was basically all just them stretching the shit out for uh, time while Kishimoto wrote the manga. Yeah, because at that point. Um, although I think at the point where we got it, Shippuden had started in Japan. Hmm. Cause I mean, when I was when I was getting into Naruto, um, like by the point I I caught up with the dub like at the beginning of the Tsunade arc, everything after that I watched subbed because I I wanted to watch I wanted to see what happened that badly, um, gotcha. which kind of desens- desensitized me to watching subs, especially since I watched a lot of that filler subbed, which yikes. Yeah, <laughs> and then I felt- later on ship it in. See, I fell off right around the point, like right after the Sasuke Naruto fight, because I I realized real quick this was all just kind of bullshit. After this, um, I didn't have a concept of what filler was at that point in time. See, I just I lost interest after that because I was like, oh, nothing's happening. I'm gonna watch something mm. else. Um, Happens a lot with Naruto. Because I didn't get back <laughs> into Naruto until shipping it had already been on for a while, and I just happened to see it one day. I'm like, oh, he's a teenager now. When did that happen? Significantly less annoying teenager. I mean, he's still kind of annoying. But... He's still kind of annoying, but it's not nothing even close to like early OG Naruto True. level. I, like, it takes it takes about halfway through Shippuden for me to, to really like for him to really get to that point where I'm like, ah, uh, he's I get him now. Like because even when he, early swap, Shippen, when he swaps out, believe it for you know. Yeah, you know. Um, but I think after the pain fight is when I really. My opinion on Naruto uh, changed a lot. Yeah, that that's a fun one. That that's the pain arc is when we get to have a whole, a whole episode discussing. Honestly, shipping it is, is going to be happens. Like we're we're basically wrapping it up here, but like we will say we are going to get to ship it in at some point. Probably not right away because that's a lot. Um, yeah, and we'll probably there'll be a lot more parts to that one than just two, most likely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, granted, we're going to be cutting out a lot of filler because there's even more filler in fucking Shippuden in than there is in yeah. OG. Five hundred right? episodes, five hundred episodes total of Ship it in, and literally half of it is filler. Yeah, like I think you only have to really watch like two hundred and something of them to really get the story. Hmm. The worst is the is the flashbacks to legitimately the previous episode. It's like, what the fuck is this? Or all the filler arcs that in Ship it in that take place. During OG Naruto. Yeah. There's that. Like if I wanted to see them as 12 year olds, I'd watch OG Naruto. I want to see them as teenagers. I mean, I like the, the filler arc with like the food competition where we find out that Hinata can like fucking put it away. <laughs> yeah. Which they <laughs> reference in Bar- they reference in Barano, which is kind of funny. Oh yeah, that she was the the ramen eating. Uh, yeah, yeah, Bar- whatever. Barano like who who is like the master? And it's like, oh, it's your mom. And he's like, what? It's iron, iron Gut Hinata, or whatever the hell they call it. <laughs> like, yeah. And it's just her smiling oh, with man. an empty bowl. And it's like, okay. 
Yeah, it's super funny. Um, it's always the one you least suspect. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know if we want to bring it up, but I mean, we don't want to. Uh, I mean, we've been doing spoilers anyway, so I guess it's not really a huge deal. But um, with the whole thing with uh, Toby and Shippuden, mm. I knew exactly what what his deal was right off the bat. Because he's not, um, he, he's not very subtle. Well, I mean, like like the big reveal with him, true. Because the Kakashi backstory arc that we get, like. I don't know, like 150 episodes into Ship It End where you learn how he got his eye and everything. Uh, in the manga, that's right after the Naruto Sasuke arc. That's right before part two. Yeah. So, and uh, that Naruto was actually, fun fact, the first manga I actually tried to collect for. And I had a lot of it, too, um, uh, when I was in middle school. But uh, I don't know, eventually, I, I just never completed it. And eventually, I ended up. I think I gave them all to my cousin. And then later on, I just bought the big box sets because that was just the most most convenient way to do it. Yeah. Um, but I don't know because um because it was in technically the part one section of the manga. I figured it was worth bringing up the the whole Kakashi getting his eye thing. Yeah. It- Honestly, like thinking about it, like if you bring up the context clues, it's really easy to figure out who uh, Toby is. So many people didn't know. Like it, it blew my mind how many people didn't. And I, I realize now is because a lot of them didn't read the manga. Yeah. But like, yeah, it's super easy to figure out once you get, especially once like he's having that whole talk with Sasuke after Sasuke uh, kills Itachi. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you see like how he's got like the scar inside of his face and everything it's like super easy to tell who he is yeah it's just one of those things but for some reason like nobody could like nobody could wrap their heads around it yeah <laughs> uh yeah. but yeah to be fair the attention span of people watching anime back then wasn't as strong as it is now so that's true and naruto wasn't exactly the easiest one to follow along with well yeah because you had to deal with tsunami or whoever was airing it at the time because it it jumped around a lot yeah that's true but they also did have the naruto marathons a lot but the fact that like like there was so much more in japan than we had over here i don't know how long it took for us to actually get a dub but well, like the ship this, it the dub were didn't, way ahead oh yeah the ship it in dub alone didn't finish until like 2018 i want to say Something like that. It might have been like 2015 or 2016. I'm not sure. Well, the the final box set DVD didn't come out until around there. Because I remember uh, looking that up the day it came out. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I actually, to this day, I still haven't seen the end of the Ninja War in, uh, in, uh, in English. It's because it's of the whole thing we talked about before about how they don't yeah, you can't scream it. You have to buy it. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah, but I mean, it's kind of sad that the final two arcs of Ship It are literally nothing but filler. But I love it because it's it's a period of the series that like the show that is not really documented at all. And it leads into the movie and, and into Boruto, though. So I mean, it it has its purpose. Well, it takes unlike place the, unlike the Curry of Life. Technically, it takes place after the movie. Isn't that like a little bit before and a little bit after? I'm not 100 percent sure about that. I think it's all. After. I didn't actually watch it, but I, I believe it's all after. The, okay. It's kind of weird because Sasuke Sasuke's inclusion is what makes it confusing. Because mm-hmm. Sasuke yeah. legit appears for like one second in um the last. Yeah, with that Just animation meteor or something. With an animation glitch that doesn't have his eye right at one point. Mm-hmm. Because he's got two normal eyes. They show him once and he's got two normal eyes. And it's like, he's not supposed to have those anymore. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever. The animation makes up for it. Yeah. <laughs> was the, last, the last had beautiful animation. It did. Um, so much symb- symbolic stuff. Oh, yeah. 
Um, but yeah, yeah that's, so that's that, Naruto. Uh, yeah. If if our discussion didn't make any sense, that's fine. It's a confusing show as it is. Um, it, it's really long. It's it's a lot to pack in. Even two hour and a half episodes, it's a lot. Like yeah. we, there's so much that we didn't talk about because it's yeah, it's a long series. Yeah, it, it, honestly, to do a proper Naruto breakdown, it would possibly probably it, it would be like almost a hundred episode podcast in its own right. Oh, well, I've actually used to follow a Naruto podcast, and it's way beyond that. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, you remember, we thought we could, now, but... <laughs> you remember, we thought we could cover it in one episode, like the whole we thing. Probably, <laughs> we probably could have, but I think at that point, that was our second recording of the night, so we were also exhausted by that point. Well, no, I mean, remember way back when we started, we wanted to do all of Naruto, like the entire oh, franchise right. in one. Episode. Oh, yeah, that was. That probably would have like doubled the the time that we did for that first Dragon Ball episode we did. Yeah, well, also Dragon Ball is just an easier show to explain. Naruto, there's yeah, so it's, much it's fucking a lot more stuff simple. going on. Mm-hmm. For sure. But, uh, um, yeah, other than that, though, not much else to say. I still recommend watching original Naruto, at least the, the non-filler. Yes. Uh, and if you, and if, if you're somebody who can and or prefers reading manga, I definitely think that the manga is one of the best ways to absorb the story. Hmm. Um, that being said, though, I mean, some of like 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 we were mentioned throughout the episodes, like some of the animation and like you'd still want to like at least check out some of the fights on YouTube or something if you're going to read the manga. But and and some of the music is really good too, especially in Shippuden. The fucking um, Nar- Naruto intro themes go way harder than they have any reason to oh yeah like that like that one that everybody knows the uh, bird. fighting yeah. dreamers is that oh, one no, fighting is... dreamers <laughs> fighting dreamers is up there bluebird is very well remembered <laughs> mm. i mean they're um, all pretty good the only other thing i could say that isn't a bad way to experience the series is the the ninja storm games that's a good way it's kind of like an abridged version yeah it and while it doesn't take like the, because it'll do like the weird like mid fight cut scenes that are also interactive. Yeah, those it doesn't show like the exact fight, like it'll do like an alternate version of the fight, but it's still really well done. Yeah, uh, and you get all and, the main points of the story through it. So, and you can get all three of those in a single pack on the Switch nowadays. Usually on sale for pretty cheap too. And four is also usually on sale at the same time, so. Yeah. Um, which I, I think I started the third one and I never never beat it. It's a series I want to sit down and play at some point. I just, like most things, I don't have any time. I was considering just making my wife play those games instead of watching the show, but no, I think she... she would enjoy the story of the show enough where I think we'd be able to make it work, even though we'd have to dodge around filler a lot. Yeah. Especially once we hit ship it in. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. But, but, um, yeah. So, uh, once again, guys, uh, thanks for joining us on geek addicts. Uh, you can find geek addicts on all the major podcasting platforms, particularly Apple podcasts and Spotify. Uh, you can also find the show on YouTube with video versions and you can find us at linktree slash the barber who games, or you could join the uh, GNC podcast network discord server to find all things GNC geek addicts, uh, radio talk, gaming, anime, or just general nonsense. And with that, everybody we will see you all later. Have a good one.